Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden coming at, at you from Studio A in Melbourne at WP Elevation HQ. I'm Simon Kelly. And I'm Troy Dean. It's good to be back, Troy. It is. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the C word. You'll find out what that is in a moment. Uh, we'll also be talking about a couple of things that made the Wii come out. Got some latest news from the word, WordPress world and beyond. Stay with us. The C word is Kanye, isn't it? <laughs> you couldn't wait just a little longer. <laughs> the C word is Kanye, right? Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I've just been. So it's your. This is your fault. This is all your fault. Always, Smelly Kelly. <laughs> it's all your fault. Mm -hmm. um, Go on. Because you just introduced me to this video where uh, Kanye West somehow managed to talk his way into the White House, mm -hmm. the Oval Office, nonetheless, I believe, and meet the president. Yeah. Donald Trump. It's just ridiculous. It's bizarre. Yeah. I don't know. Like, is he stoned? Well, he's got it. He's off his face, isn't he? Yeah, sure. On something. I don't know. Like, it's just ridiculous. I mean, how. I want to know how Kanye got into the mm. White House. Like, how do yeah. you. That's a great. I mean, he's got. I want his PR team. Mm. I want whoever's doing PR for Kanye West. I want to find out who. Because that is some. Man, he's going to sell a lot of records now, isn't he? I wonder what the agenda would have looked like. After you watch the video, you're like, oh, that was clear. Exactly yeah. what they needed Kanye's to talk about. Kanye's just there. going to ramble stream of consciousness. He's going to do some <laughs> crystal meth in the car park and then just come in and ramble stream yeah. of consciousness. And Donald Trump's going to sit there and nod and take him seriously. Mm. Like mm. he's actually got something valid to say. <laughs> so, for it needs to be doper. That is the most bizarre <laughs> so thing good. I've seen in a long time, man. Yeah. And I like the guy sitting next to Kanye. I don't know who he is, but he, he looks like Kanye's... Minder or grandpa, I'm mm. not sure, but he's just kind of sitting there. He's part of the entourage. He's just kind of sitting there, like not agreeing, but not wetting himself laughing at the dribble that's coming out of Kanye's mouth. I mean, yeah. how does he sit there and keep a straight face? Yeah. And who's this woman sitting to his right? If you haven't seen this video, I strongly suggest that you, if you want to lose four minutes and five seconds of your life that you'll never get back, but you'll have a, you'll, I don't know if you'll have a good laugh or you just shake your head in bewilderment, but go and check out the most bizarre moments from Trump and Kanye's meeting at the Oval Office. It's a video I'm watching at theguardian.com right now. It's all his fault. Mm, of course. Mm. Always is my fault that you have no self-control. Correct. I reckon. That's right. How is Singapore? Singapore was bloody expensive. Oh, really? Yeah. So Singapore is S Singapore was fantastic. It was hot. It's yeah. one degree north of the equator. Oh. So it's hot all year round. Uh, it's about 25 overnight and about 33 during the day. Beautiful. And it doesn't change. And um, it rains every now and then. Mm -hmm. And it's a tiny island. It's only 720 square kilometers. Yeah. So it's a tiny, tiny island. About five and a half million people live there, mainly Chinese. And then Malaysian, uh, they're very multicultural, very multi-racial uh, integrated. Yep. Uh, they ninety percent of them live in high-rise apartments because they're so densely populated into a tiny island. It's the world's busiest shipping port. Yeah. So as you're driving from the airport to your hotel, you look out over the 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 bay or the the ocean, and there's just a line of liner ships coming in uh, to the port. Um, what else? It's gone from. It's basically an autocracy. Mm. Um, I'm not sure, and I don't mean to offend anyone here, but I wish someone can. I, I hope someone can educate me about the difference between an autocracy and a dictatorship. Uh, I think an autocracy is basically a dictatorship without the violence. Right. I think. I hope I'm not offending anyone here, and if I am, please leave me a comment and, and educate me because it's basically been run by the one guy for the last 53 years, and he's turned it around from third world country to the world's most expensive city. It's a pretty impressive feat. In 53 years. Put that on your resume. I think it's a social experiment um, yeah. that at the moment is working. I mean, it's clean, super clean. There's no graffiti. It's a major crime to do things like defame, uh, deface public property. Or spit. Uh, or spit. Or pee in an elevator. Or pee in an elevator, <clears throat> which I found out the hard way. Um, as did Oscar, and there's, there's, you know, it's very Blaming clean. It Everything on Oscar again. Blaming are it we? Oscar again. Uh, it what's that <clears throat> smell? It's Oscar. Have a Everything kid. works perfectly, right? Uh, but it is so expensive, man. Mm, like mm. I, I ordered a the first night we were there, I drank two beers out of the mini bar, as you do, a Heineken and an Asahi, and I checked out Details. the next day, and it cost me twenty nine Singapore dollars. <laughs> 
Which is, now, what, which is about to 41 Australian, Australian oh, dollars. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it was about $12 or $13 for each beer plus tax, yep. right? Ten so $29 dollars. Singaporean to check out, and our dollars worth, Singapore dollars worth about $1.40 Australian. So it cost me about 40 bucks for those two beers. Most expensive Wait, world in the city. Now, interestingly, I did a bit of research while I was away yep. because I was fascinated to be in the most expensive world in the city. And we were, and look, I must say, I must share a bit of the experience here. I felt like I was having a bit of an out of body experience, a bit like Kanye when he met Trump, because <laughs> um, I had a lot of points, uh, a lot of velocity points, which I was able to cash in for um, loyalty points with Chris Flyer, which is Singapore's loyalty program. Right. So very fortunately, my wife and I and Oscar managed to fly from Melbourne to Singapore into Koh Samui and back business class. Damn. The whole way. Cost me about 500 bucks. That's return amazing. For the whole trip. Nice one. And about 190,000 points, um, which I thought was an amazing deal. Uh, so side note, Singapore Airlines are the best airline in the world. They are my new favourite airline and I will fly Singapore Airlines wherever I can. I'm waiting for them to open up a leg between Melbourne and Adelaide so I can just fly back and visit my family because that's just the most incredible customer service we've ever had. Yeah. Um, and I, so a bit of an out-of-body experience the whole time going, wow, here I am with my family in business class flying to the most expensive city in the world. Didn't know that's that when awesome. I booked the trip, by the way. That it was the most expensive? That it was the most expensive city in the world. Right. But it's also the second most safest city in the world. Um, it always begs the question, what's number one? Like any time someone says, that's the second best, you just say, oh, well, I knew well you, thanks well, for yeah, saying that. I knew you were going to ask me that and I'm yeah. not prepared. Um, no, that's fine. So, I was just thinking of Kanye and Trump. Oh, yeah. And it would be Trumpier, I reckon. Trumpier. If they were to, you know, be a Trump-yay. couple. Trumpier. Yeah, Trumpier. Yeah, I'm down with that's that. That's good. I like it. Yeah. So uh, number one safest city in the world is Tokyo. Yeah. Number three is Osaka. So Japan's pretty much a, a pretty safe place to live. Now, Number four is Toronto, five is Melbourne, six is Amsterdam because everyone's stoned, seven is Sydney, eight is Stockholm. Um, and, of course, Google makes you click through to find out what number nine and ten are. So thank you to businessinsider.com. You just got a, uh, a click from me there. Interestingly, if you do a matrix between the most expensive cities in the world and the safest cities in the world, there's about a 60% overlap, which, um, uh, which begs the question that if um, – now, this is interesting. There's an article called The Top 10 Safest Cities in the World. And we it down start, a rabbit hole? Is that what's going on? It, it starts at number 11. <laughs> the Top 10 city, Safest Cities in the World, it starts at number 11, Frankfurt, uh, Germany. Um, classic marketer. <laughs> uh, that. Number 10 is Manhattan. So, anyway, the point is that basically if there's money in a city, there's not much crime mm. because people have their basic needs met and they have, um, you know, Money and so they're not robbing each other. There's a tweetable for you. There you there's a correlation there. So anyway, Zurich was insanely expensive. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, Zurich. Well, Zurich oh is the second god. most expensive city in the oh, world. Right. And yeah, yeah. The and the tenth safest. safest. That's right. Um, so there Singapore. To answer your question, Simon, Singapore was what fabulous. Oh. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was hot. It was safe. It was expensive. I'm glad I've been there, but I probably won't go back unless it's on the way somewhere else or to do business. Now, the other thing oh. I just want to just just want to finish my round out. You did ask. I want to finish my round out here about Singapore. The thing I really like about Singapore is the customer service is off the charts. Good, amazing customer service. And we asked one of our drivers, why is the customer service so good here? Mm. And he said, well, we're a tiny island. We have no natural resources. So, and we're the financial hub of Asia. So basically all we have is the ability to make people feel amazing when they come here. So they keep coming back. Nice. Yeah. And they do a very good job of it. Yeah, right. And you're like, I'm only going to come back as a I'm stopover. I'm only coming back as a stop. Well, because there's, ba- you know, we went to the yeah. zoo. We saw the gardens Did by the, the bay. That's pretty much it. You know, yeah, like right. three or four days in Singapore and you're done, really. Yeah, right. Yeah. There you go. I hope I haven't offended anyone who lives in Singapore or is from Singapore. Mm. I, I do like the place um, and I'm glad I've been there. Peter Wright says, just in case you were wondering what Kanye's iPhone passcode is, there's a link. Wow. Thanks, buddy. Fantastic. <laughs> is that because he probably opened his phone on the video, yeah, oh, while he was off smooth. his face on crystal meth? Yeah, yeah. Um, nice one. Well, I reckon some go. other things happen in the world. Oh, that's... Uh, Shall we, like, just have a, have a squiz and we see shall. what's going on? Stop the happen. The good, thing about it, the good thing about it being stuff that happened and not things related to WordPress that happened is we can talk about all sorts of stuff, such as this guy who I saw. I was down um, on Sunday morning at the Pavilion uh, 
uh, coffee shop. You know that spot? Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was down there having a coffee and then people started applauding and I thought it was for me, but then I turned around and it was <laughs> <laughs> behind me. There I was knew that guy. guy from that show. <laughs> yeah. um, behind me, there was this guy and uh, he was he was running past and he was about halfway through the marathon, so 44 kilometers with a washing machine on his back, collecting um, collecting donations and raising awareness for mental health. Uh, which I thought was absolutely amazing. So he's a uh, personal trainer, endurance athlete, 41 years old. And um, yeah, I just thought it was fantastic. So he left the, the washing machine lit open so people could throw coins into it. Was he raising <laughs> money for his own mental health issues or Maybe. just just awareness of mental health in general? He wasn't being specific. Right. So that's a good way to, right. you know, there's a loophole there. I clearly <laughs> need help. Please put some money in my washing machine while I run a marathon. <laughs> that's it, yeah, yeah. Because that will make it a lot heavier. A man of mine was like, oh, it's such a great idea. We should uh, definitely give him some money. We'll get like $100 of 50 cent coins and chuck it in there and see how that feels. <laughs> so I thought that was a great cause. And uh, yeah, I think that's an amazing feat uh, to make that happen. There you go. Yes, well yeah. done. Ray ran five kilometers on the weekend in the Melbourne oh, Marathon. I thought it was 10. That was five. Oh, and he, take back that high 10 and give him a high five. And he, um, he did it without a washing machine on his back. Shameful. Mm. Weak, Ray. Mm. Come on, mate. Up your game. Uh, also, Pocket, the uh, save for later and then never check it again app that we know and love, um, <laughs> has an article listening feature, and they've had it for a while, but now they're using Amazon Polly, which we've covered on a previous episode. We have. Uh, and it's like a less robotic version, so they're like claiming it as like podcasts in your pocket which podcasts i think is quite cool in your pocket so you have blog article and you can press play and it will actually turn it into like quite they do a really good job of text to speech um using amazon pocket just, awareness just going to turn the ipad down <clears throat> yeah it needs a muffle on that one it does yeah so is that something that you do when you use if you use pocket do you use text to speech um does it work well for you and would it be more interesting if they were to be more human when they spoke to you? No, but what, um, I, <laughs> well, use talking to them. I use Pocket. I use Pocket. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking to me. I am in the oh, room never. here. Well, um, I use Pocket to save things and I do actually check them later. Good. So do right, I. There you go. Yeah. Um, but I, I, um, the, I wouldn't use this feature, but it would give me mm. a good excuse because I always talk to myself. Oh. That if people look at me like I'm crazy and think that I'm talking to myself, I could just say oh, I'm talking to Pocket. I'm giving Polly instructions to read me a podcast. Or, gotcha. Yeah, I'm just talking to Polly. Just talking my, to Polly. My wife used to. She's a psychologist, as you know, and she used to work with um, yeah. people who are who are uh, who are commonly misdiagnosed as schizophrenic. Yeah. They're actually <laughs> voice hearers, so they hear voices, mm-hmm. like literally, or they hear audible voices in their head. Right not now. just like you, not just how, like how you hear voices oh. in your head. They actually hear audible voices as if there's someone in the room with them. You know, um, Simon. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And so one of the tactics that they've developed is that they wear ear, ear pieces for their phones so they can talk to their voices, but they can pretend they're on the phone so that they don't, oh, nice. so that they don't get judged in public by having a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. some outside of the box thinking. It is, isn't came it? Up with that one. It is, yeah. Well done. Mm. Yeah, socially accepted um, mental health. That's right. Dealing with. Yeah. That's a good idea. Mm. There's a phrase to coin right there. Um, cool. So uh, another article that came out uh, was about quality time versus clock time. And it is Elevate Month here at WP Elevation, mm. which is all about health. Well, actually, I'd like you to explain that. Elevate <laughs> is all about uh, elevating your business above the turbulence. One of mm. the things that we aim for here uh, with our business and with the people that we coach and mentor is zero turbulence. So that is about elevating your business above the turbulence. And uh, some of the ways that you do that are through uh, people and processes. We call them drills and crew. Uh, They're two of the three components that will help you elevate your business above the turbulence. Uh, Drills are things that you practice on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Taking a brief from a client, writing a proposal, um, sales processes, you know, anything that kind of happens repeatedly in the business so that you can get better at your craft, uh, whether it be, you know, technical skills or communication skills or sales skills. And uh, and crew is actually building the team around you so that you can kind of, you know, get out of the daily minutia. Yeah, exactly. Say. Yeah, so this month, it's we're all about, um, our little challenge this month is about having your most days off. It may not be this month that you have your most days off, but it's like, what can you do this month to get some stuff done, to really knuckle down, to set things up so in the future you can have that holiday that you wanted to have or take your weekend off if you don't usually do that, which you should. 
Uh, so it's all about focusing on that. So this article, I think, comes at a good time. It's on the Signal versus Noise um, blog, mm. which is uh, from Basecamp. And they're talking about working in quality time instead of clock time. Mm. Now, a lot of us, uh, if you're entrepreneurs or um, business owners, uh, don't necessarily have the nine to five. So why do we necessarily need to work when we're not really feeling the inspiration or energy? Uh, sometimes it can come when we least expect it. And working in those times, like they talk about getting more done in the 20 hours of energetic time than mm. maybe 60 hours of clock time. Mm. And I just think that's a really interesting process. I've been trying to learn more about my productivity. It's definitely more in the morning. So I try to do the tasks that require the most creative energy and things where I need to talk in the mornings. And then the afternoon, it's a bit more like, you know, emails and like the research kind of stuff where it's not so high energy. And that works really well for me. Definitely if I'm going the other way around and just blocking things in it, and then I'm not feeling it, it's just like, like I don't know, it's like dragging a dead horse because I've done that before. Um, dragging no, a dead horse. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just interesting uh, quality time versus uh, clock time. So have a read of that one. It's a short read, quick tip. Do you try and spend your, your word quota before lunch, do you? Uh, I try to spend it before the end of this episode. Right. Mm. You know what your word quota is? Uh, is it for males it's 15,000? Um, not sure, but but you understand the concept that once you've said a certain amount of words a day that that's it, you're out, you're done, oh. you, you know. Yeah. If you keep talking, you're actually eating into tomorrow's quota <laughs> until eventually you get to Sunday and you just can't talk to anyone yeah. all day. You've got to just catch up. Mm, nothing yeah. left. That's yeah. right. I'll yeah. quite often say that to my wife on the couch at night. She'll be wanting to have a conversation because women do have a higher quota yeah. than men. This is, no, this is a known fact. Yeah. Don't shoot the messenger and don't come flaming me. I didn't make this up, all right? 43.5% of statistics are all made up. But this one's true, that females actually have a higher word quota than males. I'm just digging myself oh, We're getting big flamed hole. on oh, Facebook hey. right now. No, big no. hole, just no digging a big anything. hole. Yeah. And dig so up, my, dig up, idiot. <laughs> yeah, occasionally my wife will be sitting you know, be sitting on the couch and she'll just be wanting to talk at like half past nine at night. And I'm like, baby, I'm out of words. Mm-hmm. I'm done. But she's not. She's not. So, so she just keeps talking and I'm reading fire book. away. She's like, why aren't you responding? I'm out of words and I need them for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. If I, you know. <laughs> Does that work? Does that... Is doesn't, that, is doesn't, that why you rock up to work with bruises it doesn't, sometimes? It doesn't usually end well. Let me say that. It doesn't usually end well. Nice. Graham Craig says, I definitely have a word quota. What is it, Graham? How many words a day do you reckon that you can speak before your mind explodes? Let us know in the chat. Cool. Sometimes we get a little bit uh, cautious about making big mistakes, especially with clients' websites. Uh, but in this article, I saw the U.S. Embassy apologizes after someone, a trainee, accidentally sent out a cat picture uh, with the subject line meeting in the email. What's um, a trainee doing sending <laughs> they're, they're important testing communications? Out their, they're testing out their email marketing system. And, like um, having they the sent out a cat picture. Um, do we have that pic? Come on, let's do the pic. No, we don't we have don't. the pic. Oh, what a shame. That's all right. Um, there we go. We just sit in silence for a sec. It is. It is uh, <laughs> there we go. Yes, nailed it. Nailed it. <clears throat> cool. All right. There you go. That's what's new. That's what's new wow. and exciting in the wow. world at the that's, moment. That's, and Kanye, of course, <laughs> met Donald Trump, which is really the big just news. Rolling back of the week. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, little phrase we have here when we get excited about things is we coming out. So let's take a look and what made us pee. What made the we come out? There's lots of layers in that. When I say the community support is amazing. So oh, there we go. Um, some of the layers are that you're getting to see what other people are doing and you see their journey, their growth, mm. and you can identify with the changes that people have made. It's like, well, yeah, we started at the same time or that person and I had similar challenges or were around a similar income level um, doing or similar kinds of jobs at a certain point in time. And then you see that they grow and it gives you, in a way, sort of gives you permission to do the same. Um, and it gives you an idea of um, what your peers are doing. So that sort of stuff is like that that can't be underestimated as how mm. important that is because I find in like in the real world, outside WP elevation, people aren't as forthcoming about mm. those little details. There we go. Jasmine Andrews from uh, WP Lounge made the we come out with that excellent case study video that Max edited together. There you go. That's yeah. what made the week come out. Nice one. Mm. Yeah. I think that was a, an accidental <laughs> slippage of the media bin there 
Uh, so do apologise to Jasmine if you watch this. You didn't actually make the Wii come out, um, but that was a case study uh, that Jasmine, uh, as part of a podcast episode that we recorded recently, and Max has edited the, that podcast episode into a bunch of case study videos that we'll be sharing with you. Mm. Um, and so it's I think an amazing the, job. the media bin just kind of rolled on there. But what actually yeah, did make the Wii thing. come out, Simon? So this week, the Wii came out when I had a look. I saw Uber Suggest from Neil Patel, which is a free keyword research tool you don't even have to log into or anything like that so to help you get more content uh, we'll help you get more ideas for content and help you get some more uh, seo research you can go to uber suggest uh, so, or wplinks.io slash uber suggest and you can check that out for free uh, so it just helps when you're writing content to be able to craft what keywords will be most relevant and see what your competitors are doing as well i think it's great and i'm actually amazed that there's no email opt-in or anything like that like because it's Neil Patel, usually mm -hmm. it's just like email here, email this, full screen pop up. So maybe it's about getting more people to use it, use it, use it, and then he's gonna increase the the email sign up or put a put something <clears> in the way once everyone loves it. I think he's pixeling you when you use it and totally. he's going to retarget you with Facebook and YouTube ads to go buy his stuff. I'm Is 100 percent keen. If people are giving value out for me to use their free stuff and they can market the hell to me, yeah, I'm totally good with that. Is yeah. it um is it um it's like, uh, is, is, it an, is it just an API? Is it integrated to like a, an API or something? I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure about the back end side of stuff. Mm. I have to have a little bit more research. I've just been using it to just kind of play around with and plan cool. some blog posts. And nice. Yeah, pretty good. Uber suggest. Very good. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. So, yeah. Well, you know, there's, there is something that we plan to talk about this week. Mm -hmm. And it's the C word. The C word. So let's dive into the gold nugget. Time to dig into the gold nugget. I love mm. the light change. It's so good. Mm. I always forget about that, but mm. Max does not. Nice color wash in the background there. Yeah. Oh, it's a Sean Connery voice coming out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 13,081 followers on Facebook. Has that gone down? 13,081? It feels uh, like it hasn't gone up no, no, since we came back from Thailand. 13,040? I think it was 13,000 when we went to Thailand. Well, you know why? Because we've been off the air for a couple of weeks. Why would anyone like mm. us if we're off the air? There we go. Basically. Mm. I'm impressed that there's 24 viewers at the moment, considering mm. we're an hour earlier. Um, I can't do the maths. We're, we're an hour different. We're an hour earlier. We are an hour earlier yeah. uh, because of daylight saving. So it's still oh, 10 o'clock for us. Yeah, what but it's, so it's like, what is it? 1 p.m. for the people in Pacific time and about 4 p.m. for New York or a bit later than that, maybe. Maybe 3 p.m. for Pacific and 6 p.m. for New York. Yeah. How mm. good is daylight savings? This is not the gold nugget, but how Fabulous. good is it? Oh, my God. Yeah. Jonathan, oh. Jonathan Holborn's watching. Hey, Jonathan, how are you? I believe you just had a call with Ray about 45 minutes ago. Is that right? Hope it was good. Hope it went well. Um, and Scott Kennedy is also watching on uh, on the old Facebook. The old Facebook machine. The old Facebook machine. Cool. So, you know, the C word is for content. And let's just smash this one out because mm -hmm. I think this is something that really holds a lot of people back when it comes to building sites mm -hmm. and when it comes to doing marketing for their clients as well. Any real client services on the old digital marketing machine uh, is about getting the content, right? Like, are you the one providing the content for your clients or are you waiting to receive that? It is a you problem, okay? Receiving content, getting content, you can't be like, oh, the client hasn't given me this and it's held up the project. If it keeps happening and you know it's gonna keep happening, it's a you problem, okay? So yeah. you need to build that into your process so it's not a problem anymore, all right? And some of the ways that you can do that if uh, do you want to dive in? Is there any sure. particular tip sure. that you've got? Yeah? yeah, we'll just have a bit of an open chat about okay. how we could help. Yep, sure. Yeah? So uh, rule number one: I think that your clients are not, and whether it's whether you're building websites or making videos, I've spoken to Max about this quite a bit. Um, and in fact, Max and I shot a bunch of videos down here before the booth went in um, on a whiteboard. And we were trying to identify the seven problems in the freelance market that we made videos for to help you guys overcome those seven problems. And I just had kind of a bunch of bullet points and Max actually helped me write the scripts because he kind of is the target audience, right? Is there anything he can't do? <clears throat> no, apparently not. So he can't juggle. Oh. Um, so <laughs> I'll show you, buddy. So the I think you should basically do content for your clients unless look if your clients are small to medium enterprise otherwise known as an SME if they're in the SME space then you should do the content for your clients because they are not equipped to do the content That's right. and if they do the content it'll probably be awful so you should do the content for them and charge accordingly and my framework for doing content is basically everything needs to have a purpose so what is the purpose of this about page what is the purpose of this video 
what do we uh, two questions that we need to answer for the audience if you're making a video or if you're putting together a website or if you're writing copy or if you're taking photos or if you're doing whatever right uh, any kind of marketing services the two questions you've got to answer for the audience is am I in the right place so if I'm watching a video the first question is is this relevant to me so I'm watching Kanye and Trump right <laughs> and it's not relevant to me, but it's funny. It's entertaining, so I'm going to stick around. I'm in the right yeah. place. This is I'm hilarious. in the right place. The second question is, what do you want me to do next? Mm. Now, obviously, YouTube, they just want you to watch the next video. That's why they have, you know, the next video that plays automatically after that video. Yeah. Um, uh, if, if you're on Uber Suggest by Neil Patel, apparently there is a full screen three minute quiz pop up that <laughs> uh, appears on that screen. Someone just mentioned this. Dave Barber oh, really? said Uber Suggest popped up a full screen three minute quiz pop up. Well, uh, so, what uh, Neil Patel wants you to do is he wants you to take the quiz because then he wants to get your email address so that he can spam you forever until you buy some of his shit. Um, so, am I in the right place? What do you want me to do next? And so just to ask your clients a series of questions, so let's talk about the about page. So I just interview my clients, ask them a bunch of questions about their business, record the interview, and then just go write the page for them. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy done. And yep. charge them for that service. Don't do it for free. Yep, exactly. If you say to your client, I need some content for your, you know, um, I was talking to a um, potential new maverick last night and he said, I'm dealing with a bunch of CEOs whose social profiles are terrible. So he's rebuilding the LinkedIn profiles for these CEOs. Yep. And he wow. said I, to one CEO, I need some information. Do you have like a, a brochure or a bio? No, nothing. Got a flyer? Nothing. Uh, do you, have you ever spoken at events? Have you got like a speaker's bio? No, nothing. So he had to basically <laughs> interview the CEO and, uh, you know, write the content. And I said, well, I hope you're charging for that service because if you don't do it, the CEO has to do it. And if the CEO can't do it, he's got to hire someone else to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? So charge accordingly. Do the content for them and charge accordingly. Yeah. And if you're not a copywriter or if you're like, oh, should I be the one doing this? The answer sometimes is no. Hire someone who knows how to do this. Partner with someone who loves doing this and get them to do this part yeah. of it. You don't have to be the one that does everything. Exactly. Yeah. So what, uh, what, what my friend Arnold does, who I was sp speaking to last night, is he's got an intern who mm -hmm. works with him. He sends the intern off to the client's bit, uh, office for a week. Beautiful. And they just hang out and record a bunch of stuff and make a bunch of notes and write all the content. For a week? For a week. Wow. Yeah. That's a pretty impressive for service. For a week, yeah. Wow. Mm. Nice one. Uh, so, all right. Yeah, that's uh, that's bloody good. Do it for them. Yeah. Like, it, yeah, take ownership of this. Like, if there's problems in the business, you can't just keep pushing back and, oh, the client's not doing this. Mm. So we'll solve that problem. So then it's not a problem anymore, right? Partner with someone else and get it done. Mm. Um, and I think it's really about setting these expectations early, mm -hmm. like straight right. away, Yeah. right? When you when the, the, on the intake form on, on my website for new clients, um, I've got a little drop-down field that's like uh, about the content. So mm. it's, is your content, um, Yes, I have high quality content and photos ready to go. No, I am still working on these. No, I need your help. Those options. Yeah. So they, they're pre-framed and they understand from the beginning that this is important. And then we have the initial meeting. I'll say it again. And then in the proposal, we'll also have a segment about like when, uh, the responsibilities of content collection. So I think that's one of the most important parts. And repeating it, like just drill it in because it is a massive problem. Or it can be if you don't set the expectations up early. Yep. 100%. Mm -hmm. Kristen Craig says, hi. Hey, Kristen, how you doing? It was great to hang out with you a few months ago in San Diego. Mitch Britt says, content snare plus detailed instructions equals awesome. 100%, dude. Yep. Detailed instructions is the key, providing frameworks for your clients. So if you're not using a tool like Content Snare or some other app, uh, you can just do something in like Google Docs or Word, just a table. It's like, here's mm. some stuff we need. Fill in these gaps. If you can't, our copywriter will. Don't be fooled into thinking that the tool is going to do the work for you or your client because it won't. Exactly. In fact, using a tool as good as Content Snare is or any of the other tools available, using a tool like that just gives your client one more place to log in, one more hurdle to jump through. It might be helpful for you to keep the content organized for that client's website, but don't be fooled to think that just because I've got this tool that's going to help me get the content from my clients, that that's actually going to help you get the content from your clients. Because if, you con if your clients don't have the skills to create the content or give you a good brief, then they don't have the skills. And your job is to extract that information out of them and to come up with a communication strategy that helps them achieve what they want to achieve. That's what you're getting paid for. Bam. Yeah. Right. If this was a thing, I'd drop the mic. <laughs> We are going to drop these mics. We are though. going to drop these mics. We're yeah. going to go back to the lapel mics because there's too much of this infrastructure in the way and I just want to get rid of it 
That was a Kanye segue, wasn't I, it? If I get rid of it, you can't hear me. And that's why content's important. And that's why these mics are going. And also, when I took my son to the baseball game, that's it's right. like, what the hell are you talking about? Correct. We've got to release the love, man, and feel the power. Yeah. And so, that's um, why Canon is my favorite camera. Yeah. What are you talking about? Got to release these microphones. Yeah. All right. Where, where are we? What are I we talking about? What year is I it? I do believe we are up to, and I think we have covered it, but we should cover it again in more depth. We're up to the tool of the week. Get ready for Tool of the Week. Tool mm. of the Week, it's gone, yeah. <laughs> ah. uh, cool. So this week's Tool of the Week, as you saw before, is Content Snare, which is fantastic for organizing the content that you got from your clients, but you have to get it in the first place. It also it provides frameworks to help you do that, and there's a lot of training. And the um, I think it's the Agency Highway podcast that James Rose uh, mm -hmm. runs. It's fantastic information there. Um, I had James on a webinar where we went deep into the content collection process, which was awesome. Uh, if you're a WP Elevation member, check that out in the um, in the member area. Uh, and if you're not, then why not? There's really no fix that there. immediately yeah. by going to wpelevation.com and clicking the join button. Mm -hmm. mm. Fix that immediately, which you can now. You can. You, you, couldn't. That's and right. Previously, you, you had That's to wait nice. three months to join the program. Now you can join WP Elevation any day of the year. What a wonderful world we it live in It is a wonderful now. world. Um, if we could rapid fire go through these apps, Max, you reckon we could do that? All right. These, these, are, some, um, these are some apps from, from James. He reckons are awesome. All right. One, flow map. Love it. Helps you create uh, site maps and it's awesome. Next one, slick plan. It's pretty much the same thing, but someone else liked it more than flow map. Cool. Follow up then. It helps you CC an email and then it will return the email at a certain time. Wow, awesome. Well done. Um, my personal favorite is flow map because not only does it allow you to map out site maps, but it allows you to map out user journeys. I'm not invited to the beta for that one. Oh, upset. there you go. Yeah. You have to be I special. I was upset for like two seconds and mm. then I stopped caring. Flow map is awesome. Spelt with a double P, flow map. Very exciting. Mm. So, some people... But again, don't be fooled. The tool won't help you get the content from your clients, okay? Don't be fooled. It's not about the tool. It's not and about the tool. Maybe something with all, and we could make a little rap cool. about it. Cool. Don't be yeah. fooled. It's not about the tool. It's time to be cool and not drool. Yeah. Cool. Let's help someone Let's get... back out of that. <laughs> Let's get unstuck. Thank God Max Thank saved God us with that. a bumper. Eh? <laughs> that was going south real quick. Yep. All right. So this section here, let's get people, let's get, let's get unstuck, is where you get to ask us questions. Um, if you want to ask us a question and you're not a member of our program, you can just hit us up on our Facebook page at wpelevation.com slash Facebook. In fact, you're here right now watching this video. And just ask us a question underneath any of the videos and use the hashtag... Unstuck. Nice. I just made that up. Yep. Use the hashtag unstuck in uh, ask us a question and we will endeavor to answer your question on a future episode. Uh, Mitch Britt says shiny tool syndrome. Yep. That's right. 100%. So who's got a question? So this this week's question comes from Aiden Spence and we've kind of answered it, but it seems like he's stuck somewhere else. What apps do you find works the best for content collection? <laughs> Um, I recently set up an account with Contents there, but I've not got a minute to look into it. Isn't that hilarious? It's like, I'll yeah. sign up for this tool. Ah, the tool's not working because I yeah. don't have time to log yeah. into it. Yeah. Yeah. Step one, sign up for tool. Step two, do something else. Yeah. Walk away. Pay for it and then just walk away. Yeah. Um, I would highly recommend reaching out to James Rose and saying, hey, man, the tool's just not working. You know, I paid for it and what's next? What do I have to do? Log in. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, like he'd probably be very happy to like give you a bit of a walkthrough and help you get started. Like that's, that's his goal is to help you get that end result as quickly as possible. Mm. So reach out to him. He's probably got some resources to help you get there. So I hope that helps. Aiden. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah. Let me know how the, that goes and, for you. And the thing, just to, not to labour a point, but I'll labour a point. Um, you've, there's no point having the tool if you don't have a framework to get content from your clients. So you've got to know you've got to know which questions to ask, and you've got to be able to capture that information from your client and then turn it around into something meaningful that helps them communicate what it is they want to communicate. Absolutely, it's not that hard when you know how. Yeah, exactly. And you know that the webinar that we did, there's a lot of content in the members area about collecting content mm. basically so check that out yep. like have a search for that within the members area check out the latest webinar there's lots of gold if you are a member and there's lots of the opposite of gold if you're not clay i was gonna say lead is that a thing clay yeah, lead's, yeah, a clay's, thing. A bit. lead's definitely a thing yeah, is it? yeah. nickel yeah 
Aluminum. Um, yep. As these our American are, friends say. We, we say metals. aluminium. Have you seen the second season of War on Waste? No. It's really good. No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. So they're talking that. about e-waste and there's a lot of like oh, precious yeah. metals in these things. Yeah, there is. That's right. Yeah. There's gold and platinum. In, in fact, my wedding ring is made of recycled platinum. Oh, wow. Everyone thinks it's silver. Is that because you had to buy it yourself because Amy still doesn't think you're married? That's right. Is that- if I put it against my black shirt, you'll be able to see. <laughs> What's going on here? There we go. There we go. It's recycled platinum. And the platinum actually comes from mobile phones. Nice. That mm. looked like your new album cover. Just that little, that little, because it's got a bit of a microphone. It's got the musician goatee going on there. Look at that. Damn, son. Um, recycled platinum comes out of, a, comes out of the phones. <clears throat> My wife's engagement ring and wedding ring is also made of recycled platinum. Cool. Very nice. Mm. I like it. Tonight on The Boring Show. No, I like it. It's mm. good, mate. Don't, mm. don't do Damn. that to yourself. Mm. Thanks. Yeah. I think that that is the sound. <laughs> that is the sight of wrapping of, up. It's the sound of silence. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, hey, this has been fun. It's good to be back in the hot seat. Uh, Susan Bailey Weaver says, ooh. <laughs> Not sure what about, but she says that anyway. Um, Excellent. The, uh, the, is that how you said it in your head when you typed it down, Susan Bailey Weaver? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, it's good to be back from Thailand and Singapore. It was a fantastic event. I can't recommend highly enough. If you uh, if you've got remote staff and you haven't met them, even if they're living interstate or across the other side of the planet, doesn't matter. Get into a room and meet your remote staff. It was great. You met Amy for yeah, the first time. It was awesome. <clears throat> and uh, we all met our Filipino team, and they met us, and it was you know it was great. And um, I think and even like Ben who works here in. Melbourne and Maddie, who's in the Gold Coast, they mm. met for the first time. Absolute game changer. And, uh, you know, do some social stuff as well. Go snorkeling and, um, Trying you not know, to drown each other. Yeah, and go 10-pin bowling and go drinking and singing karaoke and all that kind of stuff and bond as a team. It's, uh, it's been awesome for us. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Good to be back in the hot seat. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Remember, if you've got a question for us, hit us up on our Facebook page with the hashtag unstuck and we will uh, endeavour to answer your questions on a future episode. Uh, look forward to seeing you again soon, and hopefully these microphones will be gone next week and we'll be back to the lapel mic so we'll have more room to kind of dance and do this kind of stuff without this shit getting in the way. Um, look forward to seeing you then. Until then, uh, I'm Troy Dean. I'm Simon Kelly, and remember, knowledge is power. And silence is golden. <laughs>